So how are you feeling right now? Uh, I feel outstanding. You know, it's it's been a dream of mine since I started MMA when I was first watching it, back before I even got into it, to fight in Saitama on New Year's Eve and to knock somebody out in the first round that is an Olympic champion. Couldn't have gone any better. I'm stoked. I'm excited to uh, move on in 2020. Um, was there any difference of your impression from, you know, before the match until after you uh, have actually fought him? Um, I, I think what happened exactly was what I had planned on. We were actually drilling that same combination in the back because we knew that he circled to my power side and he tries to strike and it just didn't work out for him today. And I'll take the advantage on that one. <laughs> um, we know just, you just finished your match, but uh, if you could tell us uh, about your, uh, anything about your future. You know, uh, I, I said it in the ring and I'm not bullshitting on it. Uh, 2019 was great. I signed a multi-fight deal with Ryzen. And the next step now after winning on New Year's is coming for a belt. And whether that belt be at light heavyweight, heavyweight, open weight, 105 kgs, I don't give a shit. But one of them is going to be mine by the end of 2020. You know, you fought last year for Ryzen one time. You know, you go, you face the champ. You know how it feels to go against them. This year, you started at AFC mm. and end the year on New Year's Eve with Ryzen with a knockout win. You know, talk about the, the roller coaster year. It has been a roller coaster for you. You know, you had to move, you moved, you didn't have to, but you moved to Australia, you got a new camp. Yeah. Talk about them and, and the transformation 100%. this year. You know, it's like, like you said, man, it's, it's been an absolutely crazy year for me. Uh, my first fight was in Alaska. Um, I just took the fight so I could make plane ticket money to get out of Alaska. Uh, me and my missus were leaving Thailand and moving to Australia to try and kind of get our feet back on the ground a bit. And man, I, um, I, I, I thought at the end of the day, I thought the fight career was kind of on its downswing. Uh, I didn't know much about the gym out there. Um, turns out I came across a great gym at uh, absolute MMA. You know, you guys may know of it because of, uh, Lachlan Giles and Craig Jones. And, you know, outside of that, you know, it's just a great scenario for me. And, it's, it's really been amazing to have, you know, to think your career is at its end and then everything get flipped on its head. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I'm right where I want to be. I mean, you go from fighting at the AFC Alaska stadium in front of 700 people to sold out Saitama super arena on new year's Eve and knocking out an Olympic hero. I mean, fuck man, <laughs> you can't guess me anything better. Sorry for the long translation. <laughs> you have no problem getting down to light heavyweight. Uh, but there's open weight, Jake, you know, are you the happiest you've ever been in your career as open weight, Jake? You know, to be honest, this weight at 105 is probably where I feel the best because I weigh in at 105. It means I can't be a total fat ass and like, drink all the beer and eat all the pizza and everything like that. And I got to kind of, I still have to be a professional, but I'm not killing myself to make 93. I mean, I, I walk, I woke up this morning at 102, which is the same weight that I walk into the K or the ring at when I fight at 93. So this is honestly great, man. But yeah, the, to not have to cut is great. But if they would, you know, I mean, I'm going to put that out there. If they want to do a 105 kg Grand Prix, call it cruiser weight, whatever they want to call it, I'm about it. <laughs> Let's do it. Bellator, you know, I got to ask you, mm. who's on the, you know, who over there on the roster man. you want to fight next? Because they're doing this thing. Send your best, bro. Send your best. You know, they want, they want, to, they want to send me to, I want to do it in Japan, though. That's my whole thing. Um, I'm all for the fights here. You know, I got a little bit of connection with Hawaii. Um, but I want to fight him in Japan. I love these rules. I'm, it's come, become very clear to me that I'm not made for the unified rule system. So send whoever you want. Send, if Fedor wants to do one more over here, let's do it. Rampage. Come down and start that weight cut, bro. Start it. You're up 265 this time. Bring your fat ass down. We'll meet it. We'll meet at 105. And then you can finish out at one at, at, at light heavyweight. You know what I mean? Bring whoever. But yeah, it's got to be in Japan. This is the rule set. We're really fighting. Uh, congratulations, sir. Um, I've asked a lot of fighters who 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 spent most of their careers in uh, North America under the unified rules, and every single one of them have said the rule set over here is superior. The fans are superior over here. Everything. It, like, what is it exactly about the rules and the fans that just make you a better, happier fighter? Well, first of all, the, uh, the fans, man, like you got to give them the credit up front. They, they're unbeatable, man. I mean, they, they, they're knowledgeable 
to a, to a point that you can you can pass half ball. You can pass a guard into half guard. Where stateside, all you're gonna hear is stand them up. Over here, you're getting you're getting cl- applauded. You know, uh, that's great. You know, they just respect the fact that we go in there and we put our nuts on the line and go out and have a fight. And I I love that. And then when it comes to the rule set, we're we're in a fight, man. You know, there shouldn't be these silly rules. Why why can I hit you with an elbow, but I can't hit you at the top of my knee? Why can I kick you while we're standing up, but I can't kick you on the ground? That That's silly. If we're here to see who's the best fighter, the best martial artist, this is the purest rule set to do it, especially now that Ryzen has gone from the pride rule set where no elbows were allowed to this rule set. This is the cleanest, best, and most violent, amazing thing that exists on this planet, and I'm so stoked to be a part of it. <laughs> I do a lot one on one question. Uh, you know, I, I, we saw you you know, looking at TV right now. Uh, of course, you are interested to face the winner, probably Prohaska. But if you're not Prohaska, if man. you're not Prohaska, stay here in Rising. You know, we saw today uh, Simon Bayon doing yeah. a great, great, great job. And uh, probably I I need to ask it about uh, you are previously are being scheduled maybe. Uh, there was to, no to, maybe. To, to I, face, I, I, I signed the contract. Yeah, <laughs> to, to face Ivan Shirchikov, but Shirchikov fought uh, in this, this month and he lost in yeah. the middleweight. But uh, if you if you be back, oh, it's a knockout. By God, he killed him. <laughs> okay. Can I, can I be good to know? Okay. It's, jury. Uh, uh, now it's jury, <laughs> but, but it's okay. Uh, but uh, if he, if they be bring him back, uh, you are still uh, fighting Simon or Ivan or anyone in the, for the title? Yeah, it's I, a possibility? Absolutely, man. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's like I said, I want to put on the exciting fights and everything, but now the, the, the focus is on getting that belt. And as we just saw, that, that belt right now rests on that man's waist. That, that dude is an ice cold killer, and I think I, I didn't fight my best fight against him the first time, and I'd love to get it back. If he sticks around, I guarantee you 2020 we'll see each other. If not, Simon Booyang, let's do it, baby. We'll get it, we'll get it going. Like he, he finished Vitaly the same way I did. We'll get it on.